Rather than using a canned worksheet to try out a recently learned convention skills, it's better to have our students return to their own authentic writing to dabble with that skill. But with that comes a whole host of questions, especially where are students doing this trying and how does the teacher know what they attempted? Well, it's easy if students originally typed their piece. If you have lots of technology and students are typing their drafts, they can simply insert their cursor and change the font color. They can then add in the prepositional phrase or dependent clause. They can change font color and fix any verb tense that may be inaccurate. You could also simply have students go back and highlight any of the apostrophes they used correctly to show possessives and add in, using a different color font, the ones they neglected. It's not a problem if your students are typing their drafts, but for those of us who have students handwriting first drafts on paper, we've got to consider where do they do this and how do we know what they've changed? Your writers will definitely need to know some key writer strategies, like how to use a carrot to wedge in some more details, or simply strike through when they've used the wrong there, there, or there. So they go back to a previous piece, but I'd have them use colored pens. First, it's way more fun to use colored pens, but also now I can tell what they've added, what they've changed, what they've edited. If you're working on a certain part of speech, students could return to a previous piece of writing and jot down adjectives in front of nouns on each of these sticky notes. Now you, the teacher, simply are going to scan each of those student writings looking only at the sticky notes. You don't have to read the whole thing. Or you could use spider legs. Sticky notes work great if you want them to insert something small, minimal, but what about whole sentences? They could return to a piece of writing and have to change an original simple sentence into a longer compound sentence. So they took this one and added to it, or they took these two sentences and turned it into that long compound sentence over here. Spider legs are simply strips of paper taped onto the original draft. The spider leg strategy is even more fun when it's on colored strips of paper. And primary teachers don't think this doesn't pertain to you. You can have students take fragments from their original writing and flesh them out into full sentences. That's exactly what this kindergartner did. With her first piece, she wrote, Nicole learned how to do a cartwheel, happy, but happy doesn't make any sense. So using a spider leg, she added a sentence, her mom helped her and finished that last one. Her mom was happy. Many of the convention skills we teach may require students to manipulate that first draft more than just a sticky note or spider leg would allow. This is when you might want to apply the surgery strategy. If this class was working on inserting citations and direct quotes from experts, then they're going to need way more space. They could cut apart the original piece and add in larger pieces of paper, again, simply taping them back together. Now they can work on where direct quotation marks go, how the comma goes with the attribution tag, proper noun capitalizations for names and titles, all of those skills can be utilized because we made space with the surgery strategy. So we're talking about ways to make room for kids to apply recently learned convention skills. And if they're typing, they insert the cursor and type away. If we're using loose leaf paper, we can use sticky notes and spider legs, and we can use surgery to cut and tape things back together. But those of us who have students writing their pieces in a bound book, a, a spiral notebook, a composition book, I want to give you one more strategy. In some primary classrooms, your composition notebook might look something like this, leaving space for the students to draw a quick picture and then write their words or sentences on the lines below. But for most of us, a composition notebook looks like this, where they're writing on every line or every other line here on the right-hand side. If you're truly going to teach conventions in context and have students go back to previous writings and try recently learned convention skills, they're going to need space to do it. And so I would only have students 
whether it's in the primary classroom or the upper grades, I would only have them write on the right hand side of the page, not the left. We're going to use that to try out conventions. After rereading their original draft, if we've just taught them dependent clauses, now they might go back, circle a sentence, and rewrite it now utilizing a dependent clause. Or if we've been working on commas in a series, they can circle a sentence and over here rewrite it now utilizing commas in a series. They can change a sentence that was passive voice now into active voice, or they could just work on different types of adverbs, making a list of adverbs that would fit that verb. Obviously, we're not teaching all of those skills at the same time. And so each time I teach a skill and want students to return to a previous writing, I would have them use a different colored pen. So now we have red, we have purple, we have green, we have blue. And if students at the top of that left-hand page tell you with the blue pen, proper noun capitals, and then they're fixing or adding in proper noun capitals with a blue pen, you know exactly what you're looking for. This also would make it so they could return to the same piece for different skills. They just use a different color. There are lots of ways that students could make room for new convention skills to be incorporated in their previous writing. You just need to take some time to teach them a variety of strategies that work for their grade level and the notebook or device that they're using.